uh, very alarming that EPA technically had described how toxic these materials are, toxic at the point of injection, and still come out with a summary that says they don't need to be reported or regulated. And that led me in the fall of 04 to object on technical grounds. Then the inspector general of EPA began an investigation of my complaints. Um, and several months into that, Congress took the report from EPA saying that fracking did not present a risk, along with other information, and exempted hydraulic fracking from regulation under the Safe Drinking Water Act. That leaves you and I, as the American public, in this position. We cannot know what the industry injects in our land. We, it is exempt from being reported. There are federal laws that protect our environment, like the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Safe Drinking Water Act. And it turns out that the oil and gas industry is exempt from very important provisions of those laws. Some of these exemptions date back for decades. It hasn't been a partisan thing. There have been officials from different parties that have supported exemptions for the oil and gas industry. What happens is politicians from states where there's a large energy industry often support measures that are beneficial to the industry. Down the Colorado River, about nine miles to the west of Silt, is the town of Rifle. This is when we lived in Glenwood. This is before anything, any problems, and before we lived in Rifle. This is 1993. Well, we've been married like 100 years. <laughs> it's been almost 15 years now. I'm, I'm 54, and she's 59. She's changed. She's changed so much. There's the traditional picture. There's the traditional Steve picture. In 1993, Chris and Steve Mabaldi decided to leave California to move to Colorado. We both got laid off from our work because we both volunteered to be laid off because we wanted to get out of California, move to Colorado where it was beautiful and clean air and clean water. They found themselves in Garfield County looking for a new home. There's Chris. Hi. Hi. In 1995, they bought their dream house, a fixer-upper in a rural neighborhood outside Rifle. We were really in love with the place, and we planned to just stay there forever. It was shortly after Chris and Steve moved in that drilling rigs began to appear on some of their neighbor's land and in the surrounding hills. And then everything changed. Chris would get in the shower, and her skin turned bright red. I think it was 96. It her, her skin, it was, it was burning on, on fire. She would swell. Steve began to develop symptoms as well. I'd feel dizzy. Um, I'd get bloody noses. Why would anyone think that something happening a couple miles down the road could possibly be causing this health change in their body? You see blood disorders, what is called idiopathic hemorrhaging. So you get bloody eyes, bloody noses, and also uh, blood in the urine. And um, a number of people who called me said they had this condition. I was afraid she was going to bleed to death. She'd wake up in the morning, and, and she would be covered in blood, and her nose would be bleeding just like crazy. And the pillow was covered with blood. The sheets were covered with blood. Well, around 50% of the chemicals cause such things as kidney damage, cardiovascular problems. And then the next, and very troublesome, are the neurological effects. I started showing up and just wanting to just hold my body because I feel like something's happening inside of 
me, you know, it's not normal. Chris's health began to deteriorate rapidly. She began losing her sight, had severe headaches, and had pain in her hands and feet. There were two surgeries to remove a pituitary tumor, and she developed a rare neurological speech impairment. It became increasingly difficult for her to speak clearly. I've had several patients who have um, been having symptoms since the time that they were exposed to oil and gas uh, exploration near their homes. These are all people uh, in a small cluster around Rifle. Last year, EPA got uh, several citizens' requests from Garfield County, and the citizens were saying, gosh, my drinking water might be contaminated by this practice, or the air we breathe might be affected. EPA, can you look into it? EPA should have. Um, myself and another staff person, we had prepared the letters, and we were, we were ready to write to the Colorado Oil and Gas Commission that we felt that this practice caused imminent substantial risk to public drinking water source and that EPA was going to take over the investigation. However, as soon as we got that to our political appointee uh, supervisors, they canceled that investigation. So EPA did not investigate the legitimate complaints from citizens in Garfield County. When they were drilling, we could feel it grinding underneath the ground, you know, under our, under our house, we, and then we'd feel these explosions. And it would shake dishes and rattle pictures, and, and uh, it drilled for the longest time. And the pit was even closer, and they'd burn it. They would just flare it off. The wind blew right, right to our house. Uh, if you lived in a, in a rural residential area and you were in a low-lying area, your house was in a low-lying area that could accumulate these uh, gases when they come off the tank, battery, and so forth, you may be breathing those for 12 hours a day. One of the concerns of the agency with respect to the oil and gas industry is how much volatile organic uh, carbon, how much volatile gases come from the industry, especially from storage of oil or storage of gas. Last uh, summer, in an effort to track down how much volatile organic carbon was coming from the oil and gas industry, a unique study was undertaken by EPA. And EPA brought in some infrared cameras and turned them towards these oil and gas facilities. And under infrared light, the volatile organic commissions were visible. They looked like a, a mirage. And so one could see in this infrared camera the amount of volatile organic carbon coming off these storage tanks. Every well is drilled into a stratum that has organic chemicals in it. Oil is a mixture of these very heavy organics, but it's a range from these kind of greasy, very heavy, oily stuff to stuff which is quite volatile. Those materials evaporate very quickly. All of those are potentially toxic, but we don't know to what extent. Many of them are dangerous. Ethylene, for instance, is converted in humans to ethylene oxide, and ethylene oxide is a carcinogen. Besides the drilling in their immediate neighborhood, Chris and Steve were directly downwind of what was becoming a major drilling field, exposing them to even higher levels of airborne toxins. Another source of possible exposure was a wastewater treatment facility located across the river from their home. We're only uh, six miles out of Rifle. Rick Rolls is a rancher who lives near the wastewater facility. Here, drilling wastes are separated from huge volumes of wastewater by evaporating out the water in giant open-air ponds. We're at the Williams Water Treatment Facility uh, at Anvil Points. To your Anvil Points Water Management Facility, no smoke and authorized only. This is all the produced water that comes from the wells. The old timers called it drip gas. You run out of gas out in the desert bringing your herd of sheep back, you fill your truck up with drip gas and drive on to town, that way you don't have to walk. It's smoke like hell, it makes your motor ping, but it'd run, and you wouldn't be walking. They take the water out of the tanks and stuff, 
They pump them out into all those water lines laying on that black rubber membrane down there. And little misters miss the water up about two feet. When it comes down and gets on the membrane, it evaporates almost instantly to the pits and the evap, about 20 to 30 acres. Those chemicals again, neurotoxicants. People complain when they stepped out of their automobiles or out of their homes that they got a whiff of some air. They collapsed. They shook. Uh, they seem to have loss of memory, dizziness. In 1997, as Chris's symptoms were getting worse, a water well near the Mabaldis was blown out and contaminated by drilling. According to state records, on September 15, 1997, Barrett Resources lost well control while drilling the burn clog gas well. Then the gas companies came out and told everybody not to drink the water, and they actually started delivering water to us. Then they came back and told us that your water's safe to drink. So we started drinking the water again. When the exposure is through a water pathway, people are usually given an alternate drinking water supply. You don't think of it, but there are a lot of sources of uh, water vapor in the house. Your dishwasher, every time you flush the toilet and you breathe it in and you absorb it through your skin, your dose of the volatile organic compound from the, the shower water will be several times the dose you would have gotten from the drinking water. After we started thinking, hmm, something's not right, put a glass of water out and left it sit overnight, and there was like a little oil slick on top. And then... He lit a match to it. <laughs> it burned. And I said, oh my God, I've been drinking that. And this, this is the water that they said was safe to drink. She had uh, a high thirst, and it makes her exposure quite different than her husband's. Not only was she at the house uh, a much larger fraction of the time, he would go off to work, but she had a, a much higher use of the well water that was uh, a further exposure for her. In desperation, Chris and Steve moved to Grand Junction, Colorado, abandoning their home and a place that had been their dream. We, we just up and left, you know, the place. And it was, it was valued at $440,000, and we just walked away from it. And she reported that she was somewhat better, by no means good, but, uh, oh, perhaps 30 or 40% improved being away from that home. And if she would go back to retrieve some belongings or go uh, to visit neighbors that they had had in that uh, previous home, she would feel sick, and fairly quickly. For those living in the path of drilling, years of anger and energy expended dealing with the industry eventually gives way to exhaustion and resignation. If it's going to take you a year to sell it, or two years to sell it, then um, you're probably going to let it go into foreclosure. You just throw your hands up and say, the heck with it, I'm just walking. There are no official statistics tracking people who have moved away because of the effects of gas and oil development. But in the two Colorado communities profiled in this film, the impact has been profound. There is a record of at least nine Dry Hollow families who formally complained about the drilling, and they have moved away. Some were afraid, some were sick, all were exhausted by their fight with the industry. Chris and Steve have seen the same thing in their neighborhood in Rifle. I think almost all of our neighbors have moved away, and all the people that occupy the houses now are all people that work for the wells. 